so something that I think is really important to understand, something that's kind of uh, interesting to know, is that uh, ROMs and PLAs, even though they seem fundamentally different, are actually interchangeable. And so recall that a ROM is basically a list that we can reference. We can in, we can uh, put in a, an index number or an address in a binary number and get a different number based on a table, <clears throat> whereas a PLA, we can use it to represent... Uh, various Boolean expressions on a single circuit, uh, but you can actually use them interchangeably. You can actually use a ROM to represent P um, uh, Boolean expressions, and you can actually use a PLA to represent a lookup table. Uh, and so to show you, I've kind of got like a sample de demonstration here. So here we've got a typical PLA, uh, and so this would uh, this would be something that uh, you really wouldn't be able to translate into a, a ROM because, I mean, just if you just look at it, the, the uh, Boolean expressions are rather complicated. These logic gates aren't um, one of n type structures. Uh, so you can actually get situations where multiple AND gates are on. This would not be able to translate into a ROM very easily. Uh, but if you actually look, um, I mean, if you think about this reasonably, when you go through every combination of inputs here, you're going to get a particular combination of outputs here. Uh, and that can be translated into a table. And so here we have all our inputs, here we have all our outputs, and so as we go through our different combinations of inputs, we get this particular sequence of outputs. Well, as we saw in the ROM video, we can actually translate this table into a ROM very, very easily. So even though this is a, this is a circuit that is specifically designed for a PLA, we can also use it to create a ROM. And so likewise, we can also take a, a table that would normally be converted into a ROM and turn it into a PLA. Uh, so for example, here we have a ROM. You can very clearly see that there's no rhyme or reason to the output. We have uh, four possible cells. So we have two address bits, and each one corresponds to a particular output. But you'll notice that these last two are actually identical. Uh, and so it's that little it's that little trick there that we can use to actually compress this and turn this into a PLA. So normally what we would have is we would have an AND gate there, an AND gate there, an AND gate there, and an AND gate there, each one representing uh, its particular combination of inputs. Uh, but we can actually, since these two AND gates are representing the same output, we can actually kind of tie them together. Uh, and since uh, the only thing that matters is A, it doesn't matter what the set of uh, the state of B is, we can just ignore those. And so here we've effectively got the same thing. We can see A0, B0, which is this one, uh, and we've got A0, B, which is this one. So we've got these two uh, these two AND gates right here, uh, but then these two last two AND gates are actually consolidated to this one, and because B doesn't really matter, B can change state and the, the result remains the same, the only one it's actually considering is A. And so here we have a PLA created from a table that would otherwise be used for a ROM. I'll give you another example here just to try and drive the point home. Uh, here we have a table that we would probably use a ROM to represent, but we can actually represent this with a PLA uh, for the simple reason that a lot of these outputs are actually repeating. Uh, and so we'll actually start with the one that we see the most often here. We can see this one zero shows up four times. If we actually look at uh, the input conditions, we can see that one zero shows up at one 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 one. Uh, we can see that it shows up at one zero one. Uh, we can see that it shows up at 110, and we can see that it shows up at uh, 100. In all these instances, B and C are constantly changing. So here we have B, C is 00, B, C is 10, B, C is 01, and B, C is 11. The only thing that's constant is A. So we can actually say that A, if it's on, uh, will give us the output 10. Uh, likewise, uh, we have this other output 01 here that shows up twice. Uh, and here we can see that it shows up at 010 and at 011. Well, again, in both these instances, the only thing that's constant is AB being 01. C changes from 0 to 1 in both of these. So we can actually say that A bar B will give us uh, 01. And then the last thing that's left is just these two right here, this um, 00 and this 11, which if we get uh, A not B not C not, uh, that'll give us the one one, and if we get A not B not C, uh, that'll give us the zero zero. 
And you can see now that we've got these these sort of uh, associations figured out, uh, we effectively have a Boolean expression here. Uh, even though we're representing sets of bits rather than a single bit, these are effectively Boolean expressions. Uh, and so we can actually translate them into AND gates here. So, uh, the, of course, the first one is just looking at A. We can create that association, and that's going to create the output 1, 0. Uh, the next one is, of course, looking at A bar B. So we'll, uh, let's do that a little better. So A bar B, and that's creating the output 0, 1. And the next one is A bar B bar C bar. So A bar, B bar, C bar, creating the output 1, 1. And A bar, C bar, or A bar, B bar, C, B bar, C, is just creating the output 0, 0. So by using a PLA, we've effectively been able to reduce the number of AND gates that, we've, that we would have otherwise used in a, in a ROM from 8 down to 4. And so this is really only possible uh, when you get these patterns like these. Um, so if you find yourself with a ROM that actually has repeating bits, it doesn't hurt to take a check, uh, take a look to see what bits are constant, which ones are changing. Because if you have a situation like that, you can usually uh, consolidate some of those AND gates and reduce the size of your circuit. Now I should also mention that um, any PLA, of course, because a PLA will always go through its combinations and produce a particular output, any PLA can translate into a ROM. But not every ROM can translate into a PLA. Sometimes you get ROMs that are just so random that you can't, cannot translate them into a PLA. Uh, they simply must be uh, created as ROMs. But sometimes you can get these instances where ROMs can be turned into PLAs. And so you may be asking yourself, well, how do I know which one to use if I should use a PLA or a ROM? Should I always use a PLA? Should I always use a ROM? The answer is it depends. There are some situations where a PLA is more applicable and more necessary than a ROM. There are other applications where a ROM is simply necessary and you must use a ROM over a PLA. When those situations arise, which situation you should use a ROM, which situation you should use a PLA, is kind of something you have to figure out. Uh, it, 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 it's something that's intuitive once you figure it out, but until then it's simply a case of practice. So my only recommendation is just start building circuits. Eventually you'll start to see when you can use a ROM and when you could use a PLA.